with verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 10, beginning with verse 13, it says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Everybody here in this building, everybody watching this videotape or this recording, fights the same storms, battles, faces the same temptation. So don't think that you're facing something nobody else knows anything about. Because we're all in the fight together. But God is faithful. Now, lots of times we're not. <laughs> but I'm going to guarantee you, upon the authority of Jesus' name, that God is faithful. We may not always be faithful to each other. We're living in a time of massive unfaithfulness. People are not faithful to much of anything. It's in the home, in the marriage, in the job. <laughs> Lord, <clears throat> it's in uh, everything. It's hard to find faithful people. Boy, I got a bad cold wave on that. I'm good about getting those cold waves. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Or whatever you're capable of standing. God won't let you be tried or tempted greater than what you can say no to. I couldn't help it, Brother West. It got me. No, you... It may have got you, but you could have helped it. <laughs> God said, I'm faithful. I'll guarantee you, you could have helped it. <laughs> I'm going to get off of that. That's not what I'm going to preach, but that'd be a real good place to camp out a while, wouldn't it? <laughs> but we'll, with the temptation, also make a way to escape. You remember that message I preached? That you may be able to bear it. There is a way to escape. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. And see, his flesh is the bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of the sacrifices, partakers of the altar. What say I then? Paul is really a strange writer. Ain't no wonder Simon Peter says he writes things hard to understand. <laughs> Peter didn't care to tell the whole world. That man writes things I just don't understand. <laughs> but he had a revelation. Come on, church. What well, say I then? That the idol is anything? Or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say, listen to this closely, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice they sacrifice to devils. And a lot of that's going on in religion in America today. And I'm going to say some unpleasant things tonight. And I hope every flicker of it's caught on the film and every word on the tape. I want it to be there. And not to God. There's billions given to religion and churches and organizations every year that's supposed to be directed to God but never reaches God's work. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. 
Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Now, I'm not very popular in this world. See, like the longer I live, the less popular I get. But up in Indiana, God spoke to me. He said, I have given you words of truth to speak to the people. And he said, these words of truth are like fine fitted keys that will unlock the doors, that will cause the doors to come open, that many people have been trapped behind doors of darkness and despair and all kinds of things. And God told me, he said, I've given you the power to break those chains of darkness and to set the people free by the power of these words of truth. Somebody said, praise the Lord. It's an awful thing, and I'm going to say some very serious things tonight, but it's an awful thing when a prophet of God or a pastor, a real pastor of God, now we got a lot of pastors across this nation that are hirelings and they're not real pastors. When the storm comes, they hit the road. When the battle rages, they don't stick it out. A hireling. But the real shepherd will fight for his sheep. Will stand for what's right. Will die in a puddle of his own blood before he compromises over his sheep. Somebody say amen. I feel a Holy Ghost all over me tonight. It's the shepherd. And pastors, God said, that have caused my people to err. And lots of people are in trouble tonight because they don't know which way to turn or what to do. It is a terrible thing when an anointed pastor or an anointed prophet or anointed vessel has to stand before his congregation or any evangelical congregation and say, I want to see who's on the Lord's side. Because as I said a few moments ago, there is a way that just seems so right. It looks so glamorous. It looks so sparkling. It looks so wonderful. There's no storms. There's no battles. There's no trials. You get to church at seven. You're home by eight. No responsibilities. The church doesn't demand anything of you. Praise God. You never hear five minutes preaching in six months. Because you found the perfect church that never picks on you, never gets on your toes, never upsets you or frustrates you or agitates you. You are probably in the wrong place. Would you put this on television, Brother West? If I had a satellite, I'd blast it to the world. I guess if I had world coverage, I'd have to find me a cave in West Virginia to hide in like Elijah. Because I would tell men the plain truth. I really would. I truly would. There's just a way that we want to be right. Oh, we wish it could be right. Oh, my, if I could just fit into that. But if you're real, you can't. If you're real, you don't want anything but the real. If you're real, you can't accept the counterfeit. If you're the real thing, you can't accept the artificial. Come on here, church, and say amen. And when it comes right down to the bottom line, the finality of it all, we're talking about eternal life. We're talking about a way that leads to heaven that don't branch off into a thousand directions. It leads you straight to the portals of glory. 
That way is Jesus Christ. And they were also talking about a way that people are running all over Kentucky trying to find the easy way. Get me in on time. Make sure I'm home by 15 to 9. You've got my support. Don't preach hard at me. If I get in trouble, don't get mad at me. Just let me do what I want to do. Go where I want to do. Go do whatever I want to do. Say what I want to say. Let me live any way I want to. And tell me I'm okay. And you've got my tithes and my offerings and my support. See how cold it got when I said that. My amen's got worth $50 a piece right there. But God said through the teachings of Paul that there is no way that you can eat God's bread and Satan's bread. You're going to wind up with indigestion like you ain't never had. You're going to have a bellyache that the devil won't help you with and God can't. Come on. I said, come on. God said you can't drink from Satan's table and my table too. God said you can't eat the truth one night and a lie the next. God said it just won't work. Because you see, you are what you spiritually eat. If you get filled up on Satan's devices and his little doctrinal forms that tell you what you want to hear and develop you into that kind of a person, you become the type of person that will shield off or reflect off God's anointing. You'll get mad at the preacher if he crosses your wire. You'll get mad at the prophet if he gets on your toes. You'll storm out of the building and say, I don't have to listen to that. But the truth is, if you don't listen to it here, it's going to meet you in the judgment because God's got to have somebody, thank God, that won't compromise, that'll stand for what's right. Somebody say amen. I said, somebody say amen. The reason I know God spoke this to me, I was getting ready to get out of the truck out there. This was the farthest thing from my mind when I came across those interstates last night. When I got into Corbin, into London today. But God spoke to me out there and said, I want you to preach this tonight. I thought, God, I haven't read this. I haven't studied this in months. Years probably. And he let me know right then that he was still doing the preaching. <laughs> glory. So I said, take it over. Hallelujah. We are coming into the, the greatest separation that the religious world as a whole has ever known. You are getting ready to see who the real temple of God is. You're getting ready to see who's really got it and who doesn't have it. Somebody say amen. I've been preaching a message across the country. Some of you heard it. They didn't want him in Nazareth, but just down the road, he was healing the sick. They didn't want him in Nazareth, but just down the road, men were climbing sycamore trees just to get a glimpse of him. They wouldn't have him in Nazareth because he was just Mary's boy. He was just Joseph's son, but just down the road, uh, they were tearing the tops of buildings off uh, and roofs off uh, to get somebody to Jesus. I'm here to tell you that there's a people coming out on the breadth of the earth, uh, and they're not worried about names over doors. They're not worried about corporation names. They're not worried about religious tags. They're coming for the glory of God and they're going to have the power to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the powers of the enemy and many of them are going to have the power to prophesy and the separation is going to come. There's not but two sides to a fence. You're not going to make it in the middle of the road. You're going to have to get on one side or the other. You can't live for God and follow the world you've got to follow Jesus he said my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they shall not follow it's time to make up your mind whose side are you on we're going to come to the place that everything even to the fine spiritual root hairs of this harlot this Jezebel system it's going to all be on the same side. 
and the real people that's called by his name that's part of that body it might be a foot it might be a hand but they're going to come together in the name of Jesus with power to tread upon scorpions and serpents and they're going to lift up a bloodstained veil of holiness and declare the authority and the power of Jesus great and mighty wonderful name somebody raise your hands and shout yes, yes. didn't hear you like I want to shout yes, yes. but you can't dibble dabble and get this somebody stay tore all the pieces You get over yonder and you get you a good prophecy. And some prophecy is really good. But most of us in this building tonight, if we've done what we've been prophesied we're going to do, move over, Oral. <laughs> You'll have to step aside, Brother Copeland. <laughs> and then we get dismayed because... It just ain't working out like that. You go over here, it's real easy. It's real easy to sit down at Satan's table and not even know it. How do they go to fight in the name of Jesus? When they go to fight in the gifts of the Spirit, when they go to telling you God used to heal but don't anymore, when they go to telling you that God healed 2,000 years ago but he quit, you're at the wrong restaurant. Somebody say amen. You better lay the menu down on the table. Get up and say, I don't even have a... The only tip I've got for you is to get out of this mess. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And find you somewhere where they put the bread on the table and they believe in the fullness of the power of God and they don't compromise and they don't care what the devil thinks about it because they done found out if they please God, it don't matter what the devil says. But you can't be on two sides. <clears throat> you just can't be on two sides. You become double-minded. You become double-hearted. You become double-tongued. You become double-indoctrinated. You're worse than double-mint. Trying to double your pleasure. Oh, Lord, I'm in trouble. I'm just trying to get all of God. I can't just make sure that you're eating God's food. If any insinuation is there against the name of Jesus, you are in the wrong booth, darling. <laughs> Honey, God's got a smorgasbord. <laughs> I don't understand. I really don't understand how people can take one scripture read out all the rest of the Bible because God's Bible describes a smorgasbord. Anything good to eat's on there, honey. He'll help you grow into the best that you can be, the most mature that you can be, and that smorgasbord's got more, honey, than just peas on it. It's got honey and it's got butter and it's got bread. It's got milk. It's got water. It's got wine. It's got whatever you need. Somebody say, man, you don't have to settle for a little of nothing. All you've got to do is find the place where the power is moving. Find the place where the anointing's free. And God's got a table prepared even in the wilderness. Hallelujah. In the presence of your enemies where he'll feed you from a smorgasbord. That there's not a natural thing in this world can compare to it. Hallelujah. I said, I wish somebody say hallelujah. Well, Brother West, 
I've just been in this same situation so long I hate to switch boats in the middle of the stream. You know what I mean, Brother West? I sure don't. If I was sitting in the middle of a big factory where I'd park my carcass, hey, like them dignified words. If I was sitting in the middle of a big factory that somebody had mislabeled the boxes, and I was getting sick and afflicted and weak and down and out, and I thought I was eating Holy Ghost cereal, and come to find out it was rat poison. I don't care how much cream they brought me and how much sugar they tried to put in it, they're trying to kill me, honey. Don't you think I wouldn't hit the door? Somebody say amen. It's time to let the world know whose side you're on. It's time to let the clergy across this nation know we're tired of sitting back never getting to hear a good message. We're tired of, of your pamphletized sermons coming in the mail and you trying to preach a message that might have done something for somebody in California six months ago, but it ain't done nothing for me. It might have worked for them, but it ain't working for you. We're going to have to get down on our knees and seek God and get that Bible down in front of us and lay it in front of God and say, i got to have what this book means. I don't want to be what somebody else wants me to be. I want to be one of yours that's got the bed of life in his hands and the word in his tongue. Somebody that loves Jesus, clap your hands and give God a great big cheer. Glory be to God. Do you feel that anointing tonight? Somebody walked into that rat poison in fact and told me they had a false sign over the door that it wasn't it wasn't good cereal, it wasn't good wholesome cereal, it was a disguise and told me and showed me why I was sick, why I was depressed, why I was weak, why I was down. I'd be glad to walk out that door. Somebody say amen. Now let me tell you what's getting ready to happen to Jezebel across this nation all over the world. There's prophets getting ready to raise up. Come out on the scene. She struts around in her beautiful white gown. She looks like a woman headed for a husband. She says, I, I sit a, a queen and I'm no widow. Are you listening to me? She thinks she's something else. She, she, she sits like a queen, but she won't have a husband. That's what Jezebel means. It means unmarried and won't have a husband. That means she won't take his name. Huh? Well, I got news for you. I may sound a little obsolete and backwoods here right now, but understand the context of it. There's some prophets getting ready to jerk that white dress off of her. And underneath that beautiful gown she's arrayed herself in religiously across this nation around the world is an old tattered scarlet dress that means sin, honey. It means sin. And the prophets are getting ready to uncover it and let the world see her for what she is. Somebody say amen. It's time for people to understand that we're at the crossroads and that Jesus is coming. And he's not coming back after a confused mess. He's coming back after a people that have separated themselves and come out from amongst this stuff and put stop to the unclean thing and receive him into their lives and become changed and different for the glory of God. Is that too straight? Let me tell you something, honey. The Holy Ghost is speaking to me tonight. The same Holy Ghost that spoke and said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, or Saul and Barnabas. For the work that I have called them to do is the same Holy Ghost that's speaking to some of you out here tonight. You're never going to fit in this world. You can never be like the world. God said, I made you different. God said, I called you to be peculiar. Come on, church, and say amen. Because his people are a holy people and a peculiar people and a sanctified and set apart people. He said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I chose you. Come on here, church. Amen. There's no way. So many of you are frustrated and confused in your life. All I want to do is just fit in, Brother Wes. 
I just want to fit in. You can't fit in where you don't fit. That's like trying to put a half inch nut on an inch bolt. It don't fit. You can twist that thing to your thumbs get sore. It's not going to fit. You're a mechanic. It's not going to fit. You're a square pig trying to get in a round hole. <laughs> Somebody said, yeah, you're a nut. You hang around here and I'll show you what kind of tree I'm hanging on to. <laughs> I may be a nut. Glory be to God. You just can't have both. God said you can't eat it both. You can't drink both. Just can't do it. There comes a time when you have to make up your mind. And you rest assured there's witnesses getting ready to come on the scene. Prophets. And I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, what is this? May the 26th? 7th? What? 24th. Okay, I'm only two or three days off. May the 24th, 1991. Almost said 1990. I'd have been about a year and two days old. I believe that the witnesses that will bring the move preceding the return of Jesus are already alive in the world ready to come to the front they are going to be so powerful in the anointing of God that it is going to cause the great the greatest separation the world has ever known religions going to hate them but the elect are going to follow and they're going to hear somebody said praise the Lord I feel the Holy Ghost all over me we're living in a time when people want a materialistic religious God that they can see and touch something they can touch something tangible and they want to trust in that to save them. but the Lord is a spirit and he is in this place tonight in the absence of the prophet listen to me just a minute when there's an absence of the prophet the people will resort to anything to satisfy their desire for a God prophets have never been loved they have never been liked very much they have had a few followers but mostly despised Moses went up in that mountain to talk to God he was the prophet. He was the man with the vision. He was the leadership that God ordained and appointed. Moses went up in that mountain to talk to God and to get those tables of stones with the commandments and the law in it. And while he was gone in that mountain, this spiritual spirit, this religious spirit, began to rise in the hearts of those that were not real for God. And they went to Aaron and said, Make us a God. Let us be able to see the God that brought us out of Egypt. And they brought their earrings, <coughs> their anklet chains, the bracelets and doodads. Yeah. 
Man had to depend on it today, honey. He, they, they, some of them hold right on to him. Say, you ain't getting mine, man. Whoo, it's getting cold when I say that. But they brought them and they, they brought them to Aaron and he melted them, the gold. And he formed this golden calf. Oh, how it looked so good to them. It was something so shiny and so sparkling, so gorgeous, so beautiful. It was like a mirrored image that you could see yourself in, no doubt. And he said, here's your God that brought you out of Egypt. And him, Moses, brother. Now you listen. All he did was do what the people wanted. And if you want to be popular today, do what the people want. People will donate you $50 million to build an Olympic-sized swimming pool in Jesus' name. <clears throat> they will give you $20 million in offerings and gifts to build trinkets and gadgets that don't mean no more to God and salvation than a goose flying backwards over the North Pole. Hey, like them dignified words. Don't you get mad at me. I may be the man God sent to turn somebody in this building around to keep you from perishing, to keep you from being lost forever. I love you. I'll tell you the truth. I care about you. I fought the battles and I've won. I've been on the mountain with Jesus. And this church world today that's half in and half out, the ones that you can't tell one from another, are that spew in his mouth. He said, I will spew you out. They're not cold, they're not hot, they're lukewarm. They're not gods, they're not the devils. They're holding hands with one and on the other side holding hands with the other. Amen. Please don't you get mad at me. I may be the best friend you ever had in your life tonight. If I pull one soul out of Satan's clutches, then it's worth it all to me. If I don't get one dime in the offering, it doesn't matter. God will send me somebody that will make up the difference, but I will tell you the truth tonight. Now, they were getting by. Please listen to me. I want your attention. I want you to maybe watch this tape to understand that I love you. And that's why I'm speaking these words to you. They were getting by. Brother, they were having a frolic. They were having the biggest dance of a century. I mean, they were dancing, they were hooping, they were hollering, and it seemed like there's a lot of that going on in a religion across America. you never seen so much charisma in all of your life. People are hollering and are jumping and are clapping and are shouting and they don't know what they're shouting about. You get up in the pulpit and mention the name of Jesus three times and the pastor and the leadership will lead you to the door. There's something wrong there and the saints will shout because they throw the wolf out. Maybe it wasn't the wolf, it might have been a prophet. God's got to have some prophets. Somebody say amen here, church. I feel the Holy Ghost in my soul here tonight. You say, what are you talking about? How do you know what you're... I know what I'm saying is true because I've been there 20 years down the road. I've been led to the doors right in Kentucky and said not to come back. Told, don't come back anymore. We don't want you here anymore because I'd stand up and speak simple words of truth to people trying to pull them and snatch them from the clutches of darkness and get their spirits set free. But I'm here tonight in TV. Glory be to God. I'm here in Jesus name. It's going on tape. It's going out on the airways. It's going on 
film. It's going here. It's going there. But here in this building, it's going into your heart. And I'm here to tell you that tonight there's a lot of frolicking going on. There's a lot of religious parties being thrown. There's a lot of people shouting. And they're elated and they're happy because they found them something that don't demand too much from them. All I got to do is show up once on Sunday for about an hour and I'm okay. Many times they'll go around and sign you up and you can get it all done by mail. You can call on a toll free number. But so, uh, salvation and being born again is not a toll free number. It's not a postcard in the mail. Honey, it's getting born of the Spirit and conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost and filled with the anointing of Jesus Christ and taken on the very nature of God in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. I want you to listen to this. I want you to watch this pattern and see if it is not the same. See, those things in the Old Testament were types of what are in reality to us today. Shadows and types. When the prophet was on the mountain, the people and some of those tribe leaders began to say, we've got to have a God we can see. Uh, they didn't want that God that only talked to Moses. They thought they wanted to hear him until they got, a, got a, a little taste of it. When he came down on top of that mountain in Sinai and went to talking like this, scared everything in Israel to death. They stood and begged Moses, stand between us and God. If we hear him talk anymore, we'll die. But they wouldn't listen to Moses. Somebody's going to have to start listening to God's prophets again. I'm talking about from church leaders to presidents. I'm not talking about prophets that's been called a prophet because it went 12, 15 years to a Bible college. You don't get this anointing in a Bible college. This anointing comes at the backside of a desert. This anointing comes from the mantle of a prophet. This anointing comes from the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. That's where it comes from. And if you want it, you can have it tonight. It'll change your life so dramatically. You'll never realize in your life how great a change can take place till you taste this Jesus. Till you've drunk from a fountain that never runs dry. Till he has become surreal in you that nothing else in the world matters. Somebody say praise the Lord. Let me tell you tonight, honey, they danced around that golden calf. They were having a frolicking time. They were dancing. They were shouting. They were elated. They were joyful. They were so happy. But did they have anything to be happy about? Did they have anything to shout about? Were they shouting over the right thing? Did they have the right spirit to shout around some kind of a, a foreign made image and call it a God? I'd say they, they didn't have anything to shout about. But when the prophet stood before God and God said, get thee down. He said, the people have already broken this law that I've given you. And honey, you can rest assured it may seem like that the prophets are far apart and few in between. That people are not hearing much on television because prophets have a hard time making it on television and radio because people don't support them and organizations won't back them and corporations won't hold them up high. But I'm here to tell you there's an Elijah coming through the wilderness and there's a Moses coming down the mountain and you're getting ready to see the glory of God begin to move as God restores his dignitaries back to the forefront of the battle and turns and tells his people that there's a move to come where the hearts of the children will be turned back to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers back to the children and all hell's going to tremble at the very command and the power of prophets that are speaking in the name of the Lord somebody raise them hands up and praise God for his power it's time to get this harm me ready. God's telling me that we're headed into the separation to tell the people to prepare their hearts. The end's upon us. The moves get ready to come. The lame's going to leap like a heart. The blind's going to see. The dead's going to raise right in front of you. And Jesus is going to be exalted again like he was from the lips of the apostles. And hell's going to tremble. And death's going to be stayed. And the power of God is going to liberate those in captivities and bondages and darkness. And they're going to come to this marvelous light. Shout Jesus. Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. They danced, they shouted, they were gleeful and joyful. But honey, let me tell you something. The prophet came down the hill. 
When the prophet stepped out on the ridge, the dancing stopped. Because it was time to find out if they knew what they were dancing about. It's time to find out if you know what you're dancing around. It's time to find out if you know what you're dancing to. I wish somebody could feel what I'm feeling and know and understand what I'm saying. That prophet would not accept any exceptions. He would not make any exceptions. He stood there and broke the tables of stone, burned the golden calf into powder, threw the ashes in the water, and according to scientists, it turned the water blood red and made the people drink it because of their transgressions. But the point I want to make is this. When he came down from the mountain, they might have thought he was gone. They said, we don't know where Moses is. He may not come back. Prophets today are far apart, few in between, that will speak truth. Because many times it's like walking on eggs. You're afraid you'll get on some his toes. You upset somebody and cause somebody to quit paying ties. Well, let me tell you something, honey. If you have to compromise to get people support, you ain't got much when you got. What do you got when you got it? What do you got if you had Aaron's calf? What if it is solid gold? What do you got? I'm telling you, where can you spend it? Where can you use it? The most important thing you've got tonight is your soul. All you need tonight is to get your soul anchored in Jesus and make your stand for God. Somebody say amen. Moses came down that mountain with one message he came down and saw what was happening and let them know that you're not shouting over the right thing you've made an abomination you've rejoiced and you've danced but it's not the right spirit and he said oh that's on the Lord's side not half of you but every one of you get over here I'm here to tell you that's the cry that's getting ready to go forth hallelujah and the prophets are going to speak if you're on God's side if you believe in the word of God if you believe in the gifts, if you believe in the power of the name of Jesus, it's time. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's no maybes. It's time to get out from among those that fight him and get where the power of God is accepted and real. In the name of Jesus, somebody clap your hands. Give Jesus a great big cheer. Well, glory be to God. All us on the Lord's side. Isn't that a shame that a prophet had to stand to his people and say, whose side are you on? He shouldn't have had to been worried about whose side they were on. I don't have time in Keeley, Kentucky tonight to worry about my people in West Virginia whose side they're on. I'm not a piece of meat thrown to the dogs. I'm not competition. I'm what God raised me up to be. I'm not in this religious race for who's the best. I'm a Jesus man. I believe in His power. I believe in His anointing. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel that Holy One. Glory be to God. I don't have time to worry about whether my people's on the right side or not. I mean, I get concerned. I'm like every pastor and every minister. I do get concerned, but we shouldn't have to be concerned. We shouldn't be a thousand miles down the road wondering what our people's doing, if they're still doing what's right or not. And you shouldn't have an attitude until a prophet's gone for a few days and, you, and, he, and he's backs to you and you think he can't see you. Let me tell you something, honey. God don't put eyes in the back of his head, but God will be eyes that can make him see behind himself. And God can show a prophet. And God will show a prophet. Moses got told before he ever turned to leave that mountain. God said, get yourself down. They've done broke this law. And he went down there with one message. I want to know who's on God's side. What he was saying is, I can't go into the mountains to pray. I can't seek God and advice to lead you and worry about going into the mountains 40 days and come back and all of you backslid. Whose side are you on? Don't you think it's time to get on the right side? Won't you raise them hands and say, God, I want on the right side. Come on, church, raise them hands up and say, God, I want on the right side. Isn't that something? 
You see, what Moses was saying is you can't eat from God's table and, and this, ta this table of devils. You can't eat from the Spirit and worship idols. You can't follow the God that really brought you out of Egypt and bow down to the thing here that my brother's thrown in the fire here. But he, see, God had mercy on Aaron because of Moses. Because he knew what a spot that bunch of people put Aaron on. Because honey, people can put you out of commission. They can put you out of bed. They take the bread off your table. You do what I say or I won't give you a dime. You starve to death. That's the way it is today. 